Nancy Crampton Brophy is charged with murdering her husband, Daniel Brophy, a beloved chef who was shot in 2018 inside the Oregon Culinary Institute where he worked. During opening statements Monday, prosecutors said the couple's seemingly storybook relationship took a bad turn in 2016. At one point, they even drained their only retirement account, the 401k. The state claims the couple's money problems were so serious, Crampton Brophy hatched a plan to kill her husband to collect his life insurance. Nancy started researching and planning the murder of Dan Brophy. The state says she made claims on 10 life insurance policies, totaling nearly $1.5 million. Well, there's that. Uh, that is Nancy Crampton Brophy. And as you heard there, she's been sentenced to life in prison for the murder of her husband. It all comes, of course, with as she wrote about ways that you could potentially murder her husband. That's a really weird uh, uh, approach to this. But also the fact that that wasn't even submitted into court or admitted into court uh, still got her convicted. Let's go to some details because in 2011, she did write this essay about that um, possibility. Here's some details. She goes, as a romantic suspense writer, I spent a lot of time thinking about murder and consequently about police procedure. After all, if the murder is supposed to set me free, I certainly don't wanna spend any time in jail. And let me say clearly for the record, I don't like jumpsuits and orange isn't my color. Oh, she is a good writer, um, although she is self-published. But you know, it's a nice little twist at the end to talk about how orange is not her color. Also, by the way, um, it's it, as I mentioned, it wasn't gonna be used as any evidence in court, but there was uh, also motives that she put forward in this essay. So she details it even further. One motive could be financial. She says, this is big, divorce is expensive. And do you really wanna split your possessions? Or if you married for money, aren't you entitled to all of it? The drawback is the police aren't stupid, they're looking at you first. So you have to be organized, ruthless, and very clever. Husbands have disappeared from cruise ships before, why not yours? Jeez, <laughs> Ooh, also there's ways you can do it. Options to consider, guns, loud, messy, requires some skill. If it takes 10 shots for the sucker to die, either you have terrible aim or he's on drugs. Knives, really personal and close up, blood everywhere, ew. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure of this, this is a Garrett? Uh, how much upper body strength does it require to strangle a person? Hmm, I guess I'm not a murderer enough to realize all these different methods. But she did end up uh, opting for the gun. So here's some details of how this all went down. Because some people on this essay also weren't taking it very seriously. One person said, I'm calling Dan to make sure he's all right. Of course, Dan is her real life husband. Dan ended up not being all right. Another person said, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, Nancy, I just love your mind. You're so wickedly ornery. I think this should be in your next book. Mm, well, she did get booked, but that's uh, not the way that this person actually thought it would go down. Uh, they did, uh, the defense attorneys did argue and they hoped that, uh, that the guns that she bought, they mentioned were maybe there for a uh, research on an upcoming book, but actually it was um, for other things. Let's watch more. Nancy failed to mention that she had purchased a ghost gun build kit online. She also <laughs> failed to mention that she purchased a slide and barrel from eBay. The defense insists the guns were for research for a novel she was writing about a wife trying to leave an abusive relationship. Nancy Brophy talked to several of her writer friends about this story. Also at issue, Crampton Brophy told police she was at home the morning of the murder. But police say surveillance video shows her van near the scene. She didn't put that part in her book, Ma. <laughs> when, when you have an alibi, be there. <laughs> That's the first problem. Well, the the problem is, I think that if I'm not mistaken, the essays from a few years back, maybe yeah. there weren't that many videos. She wrote the essay for 1982 when there wouldn't be that many videos. She didn't take into consideration that everything is being filmed now. So she needs to come up, like she needs to update her essay on how to kill your husband by saying, step one, dress like a ninja so nobody <laughs> sees you. Step two, camouflage colored car. Or you know, take the back roads, or you know what I'm saying. Like these she, are the basic things, right? She's really, she's not. Let's just put it like this: she is not a Gen. What are we in now? Gen Z. She's I not agree. a Gen Z killer. She's definitely like a you know a baby boomer or whatever she is killer. She's she way outdated. In, what? I think it was 2011. So I'm trying to think of the level of of, of uh, surveillance and video uh, surveillance and smartphone usage people were doing. Uh, you know, it was it was still budding. It was still decently enough. I think it'd been a couple years back. Maybe she didn't catch up yet. But let's go to details of how she did it because it was pretty gruesome. On June 2nd of 18, Crampton Brophy drove her minivan to the Culinary Institute shortly before her husband arrived at work. Is what surveillance cameras showed. 
When Brophy got there around 7.20 AM, the chef poured ice, the chef being her husband, poured ice and water into buckets he was filling by the commercial sink. That's when he was shot dead. Students at the now defunct cooking institute found his, this is horrific, his bleeding body about an hour later. Perez, the student who gave a statement to Crampton Brophy's sentencing, tried to administer CPR and others called 911. Another one courageously cleared out the kitchen so no one would have to see Chef Brophy the way that his wife left him, is what Perez said. You opted to lie, steal, cheat, fraud, ultimately killed the man that was, for some reason, still unbeknownst to me, your biggest fan, is what Nathan and Nathaniel Stillwater, who's Brophy's son, is what he said in a statement before the sentence was handed down. You executed my father in an act of cold blooded premeditated murder. The man that did everything for you. So, okay, I guess more on a human level, outside of how ridiculous this was, is associated with this essay she wrote to her carrying out the crime. When the kid says something like that, it brings us back to reality that imagine your father dies like this, and then your, I guess, mother, I'm not sure if they were, if he was just his son, she's the one who killed him with this type of premeditation, it looks like. Yeah, you know these. Uh, it's uh, it, it feels like it reminds me of uh, what was it, Scott Peterson? You know, there's a uh-huh. lot of white people who don't want to go through the divorce; they just kill the guy. Is that it's what just, happened? I couldn't remember which one was. I can never remember the motives for each of these. Scott like, Peterson took crimes. her. Yeah, Scott Peterson took her out on a boat and killed her. Mm-hmm. This lady went to where the guy. By the way, this is cold blooded because if if this were like in a TV show or something, I I could imagine she would show up with the gun. And hold the gun on him for a while and let him cook the meal and be like, one last meal for us, Tommy. <laughs> Whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's totally she was cold blood. She went in there, she just killed him right away. And then she wrote a book about it. Didn't OJ write a book about I didn't no. do it, but if I had? <laughs> Absolutely. At least he did it afterwards. I mean, not at least. It's probably dumber to do it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, she did it beforehand and thought she'd get away with it. Not the case. Rest of her life in prison. Uh, well, speaking you know, of this also pr- reminds yeah. me of, sorry, this also reminds no, no. me of Peter Navarro. Who Ugh. wrote the Green Bay sweep about how to steal an election? And then he went on Ari Melber on MSNBC and was like, Well, Ari, that's not how it's supposed to work. It was supposed to work. <laughs> we were supposed to, you know, he's on there explaining how the coup was supposed to work. I mean, I, I mean, come on, man. The worst part about that is he went on Ari Melber's show. He went on Steve Bannon's show. He went on Fox News. He went on OAN. He did it everywhere that he could. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Then he yeah. got, then he wondered why he got arrested. 